think I could have cleared up a little bit more um, with the three three things that my dad at the front. Um, I started listening to people a little more intently about seven years ago, and I probably had listened to him a little bit before then because I was always asking questions, so I'd have to listen. But I started listening in a different way. I, it was um, the end of one of those businesses where those dot-com loser not sense things that so many idiots get into. Well, I'm one of them. I'm a dot-com loser. And it was a good lesson. We spent three years trying to make the company and then it crashed inside of a half a year. So mostly it was a fun ride and it was a nice fun crash. But at the end of it, I was whipped. And everybody else in the company was whipped as well because we had put our heart and soul into something that wasn't really even ours. It was just one of those gold rush things in the internet but anyway it was a good punch in the head for the most of us and then it was time to get back off the ground again and I thought I'm gonna try something really different I'm gonna try listening to what people are telling me and I mean I'm not gonna to listen to somebody that I don't like but usually I don't talk to people I don't like so I decided I'm gonna see what it is they're telling me and build my concept from there and uh, I probably didn't, I don't even think it was a conscious decision, it was more, it just started happening and I realized, okay, stop trying to make decisions so much and, well, do what you have to do, <laughs> like you said you were going to do back when you were 22. And so I started listening to what people said and I kept collecting the information they gave me and with the information they gave me and I would work th through my writing and I don't want to blame it all on them. But I will say that because I'm an atheist, I couldn't get inspiration from God, so I got it from the angels. And the angels don't know their angels. I mean, I don't know if I'm ever making any sense to anybody, but I know when people talk to me, they say things that don't seem like they matter much. A lot of the time we talk and talk and talk and it doesn't make much sense or it doesn't seem to really change anything. But what's behind the, the meaning and sometimes the mirror of what you're telling him back Sometimes the things that you say might not even relate to what he's saying, but when you say it out loud, it makes sense to you. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you're going to have to work at it. And I'll have to work at trying to explain it to you. And that's what I'm going to do in the next little while. I want to explain to you that I didn't decide to write the Bible on my own. I decided to let people to tell, tell me what to do. Moses actually told me to do the New Testament. So... I mean, of course, a lot of people that told me things to do, they're already dead, but they leave it in the message, they leave it in the language, and the language is a very, very magical thing, and I think we underestimate our language, and perhaps I'm going to try to be a little bit smarter about explaining what language is, and maybe I'll get a few people to help me on that, because there are people who study what language is, and we'll see if we can figure out what it is that religion has done to our language, and why it is necessary to correct those faults and I think we can do it by studying the Bible and if, especially if you do believe that you are a believer like a, a Christian or a Jew or a Muslim and I think it's alright for the Muslim certainly to join me on the uh, Old Testament the Torah because the Torah is the base for all three religions and I'm gonna try to be really really friendly about it because I think that's what I've been told by the quite a few people, about four people in the last three or four days, and had they said it in any other way, I probably wouldn't have seen it, but I think it is inevitable that I must start teaching the Bible, and it's written at the other site, and I'll refer you to it, and if you've got a translation already, read the original as well. I think if you read the original and start to understand that it's a book and not holy, because we'll see that it's not holy, but there's other things to be learned in it and if we can learn those things we might be able to figure out a way a protocol and this is the third book in the Barbara Abel Bible the protocol between the believers and the non-believers and see if we can figure out how to get ourselves out of this I think the most important thing everybody will agree on is we don't need any more holy wars or unholy wars and we got to figure out a way that Christians and Jews and Muslims and atheists can all sit at a table and have a nice chat and get on with it. And that's going to be our goal, starting with Moses 
very shortly, probably tomorrow or the next day. Tomorrow i got to work. See ya. And um, thanks for um, the fans, the uh, support, the angels that I've already got out there and the other ones that aren't even in there. And we're going to, I'm going to, I'm going to make you see it. We're going to, we're all going to wake up and there's already people waking up and it's, it really will be a major event if we can get the population of the planet just to wake up a little bit it will change everything so fast we won't believe we were, were asleep back in 2008. <laughs>